Welcome. I'm John Moore. This is Don Walker. We're with JHM Technologies, and today we're going to demonstrate for you the light RTM process, and we're going to create a sink basin. So to start the process, we've already applied release agent to the entire mold surface. Now this is the lower half of the mold, indifferent than what you may normally see where the, the lower is a female. In this case, it's a male, and it makes it an excellent tool for our demonstration purposes, because once we're injecting, you'll actually be able to see the resin flowing through the upper mold half. Right now, as I say, there is release already applied. The mold is made out of a tooling gel coat, fiberglass reinforced laminate, backed up with steel box tubing, simple box tubing structure. So it's lightweight but robust tooling, and we're going to mask off the area because the first step in building the part is to apply the finish coat to the mold, which is a gel coat, a thermal set, uh, polyester type material that is going to be applied to the exposed red area, which is the mold cavity, making up the sink basin. So right now, Don's masking off the flange area that we do not want to coat with gel coat, and he's doing that with the masking tape and masking paper. So once that's complete, next you'll see us move it into the gel coat area and spray the gel coat on. So sit back and watch, and you'll see just how the RTM light process works. All right, welcome back. The next step, as I said, is to apply the gel coat. Now, the gel coat is the finish of, in this case, the sink basin. So in a moment here, you'll see Don come on. He's gone ahead and taken the gel coat, mixed it with the peroxide catalyst, and now he's going to apply that to the release surface. In other words, that surface, again, has a release agent on it, so the gel, or the final part, as it were, will release off of this mold. Don't stick to it. So. Next, we'll see gel, or Don applying the gel coat to the entire mold surface. You'll also see him checking the gel coat thickness with a wet film gauge. So I'll get out of the way and let Don do what his thing. Now what Don has done is he's applied a light film. We're looking for about five thousandths of an inch or five mils. We let that gas off and then we continue with another spray on top of that and continue to build the gel coat thickness to between 18 and say 20, 25 mils of thickness. Now you see Don checking the thickness with the wet film gauge, similar to a comb where the teeth of the comb are at different heights. And when he pushes the gauge into the wet gel, some of the teeth are touching, some aren't. And by knowing which ones are touching and looking at that, he can measure and affect the thickness of the gel coat on the surface.
Don, let's let the audience see a close-up of the wet film gauge. If you just set it in there and just show, we'll have the camera come up close to just be certain we understand just how this gauge works. Let's hold that up, and you can see if you tip it up vertically, the other point the teeth down, you can see that there are teeth on there, and those that aren't touching indicate higher depth or greater thickness, which are beyond the area we want. The ones that are in touching are within the, the tolerance that we're looking for. So we've got about a little over 20 thousandths on there, which is just the, what we're looking for. Thank you, Don. We'll touch that spot up, and we're done. The next step is we're going to load the fiber, but before we can do that, we have to allow the gel coat to cure. So again, give us a couple minutes. We're going to let the gel coat cure, and then we'll set up and we'll show you how to load the fiber reinforcement into the mold. Then we'll close the mold and inject the rest. Stand by. Okay, we're ready for the next step. Now, I mentioned that the gel coat had to cure, and we've done that. We've given it time now. It's been about 25 minutes. Now, that's dependent upon the catalyst level, the temperature, the type of uh, gel coat that it is. But in this case, this white gel coat, uh, as we've catalyzed it, takes about 25 minutes to dry. Now, how we know we're ready to load fiber is it's simple. You wipe it, and you don't have transfer of the gel coat to your fingertips. It's still tacky. Now, some gel coats are tackier than others. It's part of the chemistry. Ones vary from the other. But just simply not transferring to the fingers is as scientific as we use in the industry to prove that the gel coat's ready to, to load ahead with fiber. Now, talking about gel coat, we're showing you here that it's white. Now, it doesn't have to be just white. Again, this is the finish. When we're going to take this basin out of the mold, you'll see this white surface is the finish, kind of building it in reverse, as it were. But it could be black, and it could be every color in between white and black. Gel coats come in a myriad of colors. In fact, it could even look like stone. Let me give you an example. Here's the same basin with a granite surface. Now that looks like stone, as it were. So gel coats are available from your manufacturers in a variety of colors and in a variety of textures uh, or appearances to look as it is, in this case, even like stone. But now, as we say, the next step is to load fiber. Let me take this out of the way, and we'll show you that. 